I'm coming to do an encore tour of Back. Back is the tour I did in 2019. It went really well. We thought we should do it again. And then this pandemic came along and deliberately scuppered our plans. Uh, but we're going on sale with another tour next week or this week, or it depends when you're watching this video, week after, 10 weeks ago. Uh, and it's gonna be really exciting. Hope you can come, yay! What's the, what's the feeling? What's the vibe like over there these days? Well, the vibe is at 7.49 and my daughter's just gone off to school and I'm a little bit hungover because I, I caught up with some <laughs> mates last night who tend to bring out the worst or best in me, depending on which way you look at it. Um, yeah, Sydney's all right at the moment. It, obviously, Melbourne's shut down again and yep. we're a bit nervous about the potential spill there, but um, yeah, we're, we're getting along pretty well here in the city. Excellent, excellent. And uh, so that enables you to come over here, which is always exciting. Yeah, that's the theory. Yeah. <laughs> have you, have you, so what, what has the, the last few months been like for you leading up to uh, finally getting out and moving around? Yeah. Well, I, you know, I've always got a few different things on. I've been writing scripts, uh, TV scripts in the last few weeks. Um, right. I, I don't know how I spend my time, but um, <laughs> I, we start the tour in 10 days in Adelaide and yep. then come straight across to Wellington, then Auckland, then Christchurch. So, um we're really excited to be back on the road and a little bit nervous that you know more than a little bit nervous it's a it's a big undertaking um touring uh, yep. at, at this sort of level and a lot of people involved and already uh we we've had to substitute some of our crew um because they can't get out of melbourne to get to adelaide and all that so it's it's a nerve-wracking time but i'm we're pretty pumped you know we we shut down in the middle of a tour last last march or whatever it was right and, uh haven't really been able to play live since uh so we're pumped and yeah. very pleased to be coming back to new zealand because the yes. gigs there are always awesome yeah you were here like 2019 i believe yeah yeah so how how, how will this compare to what we saw before well, it's meant to be exactly the same show because it's an encore <laughs> tour. So right. um, the reason we plan to come back is to um, fulfill, you know, because a lot of people missed out on tickets. So we're just going around again, really. But suddenly right. it's two years later because everything shut down. Um, so it should be the same show. But of course, the world's changed and my life's changed. I put out an album finally yeah. last year and I'll probably... Uh, for you know quite a few of the songs from that record were already in this back tour i might slip a couple more in if i can yeah uh and also you know we were in trump deep in trump era uh yes. when we stopped touring and the kind of um hair pulling that that um motivated has eased a lot in my head no, not because I think America's suddenly solved itself, but just because you're not battered every day with just abject stupidity uh, to right. a degree. And also I've got off Twitter, so I'm less anxious anyway, just <laughs> putting my head in the sand to a functional degree. Um, but yeah, I, and so I'm just going to, it's the same show, but I'm just going to try and just keep it a bit more optimistic and a bit less ranty. I mean, it wasn't hugely ranty, but, I have, I, I do run a rant game sometimes. Right. Uh, and I'm just going to try and it's, it feels very important to me that as an entertainer, I'm, uh, I'm putting a bit more optimism into the world in 2021. I think we need it. Right. Right. It's interesting. I talk to a lot of musicians and when you talk about music, people talk about how their music has evolved and changed and, Blah, blah 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 yeah but uh with comedy i guess it's the same thing i just never thought about it in those terms it's like stuff changes society changes the way things come across to change so how much do you have to think about that when you're putting a show like this together um well there's a couple of things one is i um i don't see myself as a comedian and part of my journey has been like this between 2005 and 2012, I guess, I focused on comedy. But the vast majority of my adult life, I've been a singer, songwriter, composer, actor. Yep. And I have done a lot more composing and acting in the last 10 years than I have um, live touring. And so back is back ain't a stand up show. There's moments that'll make you cry and moments that'll make you laugh and moments that will 
you'll think you're about to laugh, but suddenly it's uh, not, it's a bit more uh, of a lecture. <laughs> okay. Um, but, you know, so, so I've got my personal journey of evolving away from categorizability. That's my whole thing is I just keep pushing out so that people, so I'm not so predictable because I get off on that, I guess. Right. I really, I really like the un, unpigeonhole ability vibe. Yep. And then, yeah, you, you, you react to your own aging and the way that changes your view of the world to parenthood and the way that changes your view of the world. Uh, to loss, you know, as you hit your forties, uh, people start dropping off both, right. you know, I've lost a couple of friends in their early, very dear friends in their early sixties in the last year. And then there's my parents' generation who are starting to get, you know, so that changes your view of the world. Yeah. And then, yeah, then the politics of the world adjusts and then a pandemic comes along. <laughs> and I think your job is to just let it affect you, let it change your filters and to try and speak to your audience in a way that, you know, I think my job is to talk about universal themes, but in a way that is not universally talked about, you know, like uh, I want my audience to go, yeah, life is like that, but I just hadn't thought of it like that. That's my job is to find a new angle on universal ideas. Right. So I'm assuming because of pandemic and all that stuff that you haven't been in front of a lot of audiences recently. No. So, and I would imagine that you get a lot of feedback from those people when you are in front of them. So how has that affected life and your art? Yeah, well, I'm very lucky in that over the last few years, I've, I've tilted towards stuff that doesn't have that immediate feedback. So I'm a bit used to it, but without a doubt, um, as a performer, a live performer, that um, live experience of having instant feedback from people is a drug that you're addicted to or right. at least that you're dependent on as part of how you see yourself it, it is hugely intoxicating and so all through this last decade where i've been directing films and blah blah i've always done gigs even i haven't done big tours like i'm doing again now but i've done like every couple of months make sure i'm doing a show here when i lived in america i just sort of pop up the coast or across to new york and do a show just to keep the, the muscles strong to keep my fitness up, but also yep. to get that buzz, you know? Uh, and it's quite full on not having it for a year. You realize, and I think probably in a way that's quite helpful to me, realize that you are a bit dependent on that, you know, affirmation and that you, it's probably not very healthy to be dependent on it. So yeah, I've been <laughs> having to work on finding my self-esteem somewhere else. Right, and that's right. where wine comes in. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. we all need someone. We all need <laughs> that's <on>. right. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I'm, I'm, so you mentioned playing in New York and in the States and whatever. And of course, you're coming uh, to New Zealand from Australia. How much do you have to think about where the audience, where they're from and where they're coming from? Yeah. Do you have to adjust yourself accordingly? Uh, well, again, I'm, I'm lucky slash smart slash lazy uh, in that quite a long time ago, you know, in 2005, when I realized that uh, the Brits liked my work, you know, right. we went to Edinburgh and stuff. I realized that part of the thing that they liked is I'm not really talking about, you know, I was living in Melbourne at that time. I wasn't talking about the tram from Fitzroy to St Kilda. I wasn't doing parochial bits yeah i was talking about sex and death and god you know and uh sex death and god are, you don't have to adjust much and uh, then i went to a <laughs> they are and i went to america and all i had to do is make sure my r's were clear so they right. understood <laughs> what i was saying yeah. uh so i had to say water um but apart from that i i have since then actually very consciously tried to stay universal because right. i it's just what my brain does anyway. I'm, I'm someone who likes to, I'm not, my shows are not anecdotes. I don't know if you've seen me live, but I'm not going, there was this time when I, right. I don't tell stories like a lot of comedians do. I, I'm unpacking ideas really. Right, right. Now you mentioned your, your album that you released, uh, I believe it was in November. It's called Apart Together. Yeah. So, uh, so, so what was that like releasing this album in that time when, stuff is all kind of up in the air especially well, november I mean, bonkers. A lot of stuff yeah in november. <laughs> well yeah it was crazy and and we were 
incredibly keen to just keep creating content and to keep employing people because as a as an employer i felt the weight of the shutdown on that level probably more than in a self-interested level because you know i've got matilda and you know i'm i'm not going to suddenly not be able to pay the rent but i right. i felt my so I really wanted to create work and I really wanted to keep people engaged. So I was making music videos with whatever resources I could gather, whether it was in a garage during a quarantine period with my brother-in-law and sister, or whether it was in Perth doing it a bit bigger and masked up and all that. And then we did this live stream, uh, which just in that month where a bunch of people tried to do monetized live streams, and we'll look back on it as a weird little moment in time because everyone gave up on it quite soon after because okay. it's so expensive to do and it doesn't really work. But we did it and it did work just. Right. Just made it pay for itself. Um, and sort of most weirdly, profoundly, the, the album titled Apart Together, which predated the pandemic, suddenly it felt like a pandemic record and right. it's slightly meditative and a bit morose and and it absolutely is soaked in themes of um a partners because it is about what it is to be a, I, I think a lot about what is home and the people i miss and stuff because i've been so i've lived all over the world so the record felt more relevant you know mm. and I'm stoked by how many people listen to it. I'm like, who wants a studio record for me? I'll just put it out and see what happens. But you know, it, you know, it's number one in the indie charts in Australia and all this stuff. I just had no, Very cool. no expectation of that at all. Yeah. yeah. I'm wondering if, if you had to think about the fact how you're perceived in general terms when you made, and then suddenly you're presenting yourself. In that. Yeah. Look, my fans know <laughs> that, you know, like, probably the thing that's had most impact I've done in the last two years is my TV show upright. Right. And if you've watched that, you're not thinking I'm a comedian. Like, so, so my, my nerdy fans absolutely expect me to do stuff that is not, you know, makeup and swearing about God. I mean, that, right. that, that I left that behind a long time ago. I don't mind if that's how people still see me, but right. You know, having written Matilda and upright and stuff, I, I don't worry too much anymore because I'm in my head, I'm already uh, d um, uh, unanchored from many of those <laughs> obligations to be anything really. I just keep yeah. making shit. And if people like it, then I go, yay. I'll yeah. do well, it seems like they do. I mean, one of the shows here in Auckland's already sold out. So that's fantastic. Yeah. Well, uh, hopefully, hopefully we'll sell another one out and yeah. we'll just keep coming back to New Zealand. We didn't come for a long time just for circumstantial reasons but yeah i love it love playing in new zealand very awesome good well thank you thank you for taking time to talk to me especially so early in the morning it's a pleasure marty thank <laughs> you for having me and i'll talk to you next time come very to the good. show i will <laughs> bye, -bye. Right, brother